Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to continue creating this content. In this video, I'm going to discuss everything there is to know about the human pancreas. The pancreas is both an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. This means that it secretes substances directly into the bloodstream and via ducts. So, the endocrine parts of the pancreas are known as islets of Langerhans. There are around a million of these clumps of cells embedded in each human pancreas, and each islet is around 0.2 millimeters wide. Although only making up around 1-2% to of the total pancreatic volume, islets receive around 15% of the total pancreatic blood supply. Islets of Langerhans are made up of five types of cells. Alpha cells make up around 20% and secrete glucagon, a hormone which acts to increase blood glucose levels when too low. Beta cells make up around 65% and secrete insulin, a hormone which acts to decrease blood glucose levels when too high. Gamma, or PP cells, make up around 5% and secrete pancreatic polypeptide, which regulates both endocrine and exocrine pancreatic secretions. Delta cells make up around 10% and secrete somatostatin, a hormone which regulates the secretion of glucagon and insulin from alpha and beta cells. And finally, epsilon cells make up less than 1% and secrete ghrelin, the main hormone responsible for the sensation of hunger. The endocrine portion of the pancreas is very important in maintaining blood glucose levels and its failure to do so results in diabetes. When our gastrointestinal tracts are empty, usually periods above three hours after meals, alpha cells secrete glucagon. Glucagon acts in a wide range of tissues in the body all with the aim of ensuring blood glucose concentrations don't get too low. These effects include inhibiting uptake by body tissues, as well as the breakdown of storage molecules to generate glucose. However, when glucose is being absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, usually shortly after a meal, beta cells are stimulated to secrete insulin. As well as inhibiting the secretion of glucagon, and therefore inhibiting all of its effects, Insulin acts in a large variety of tissues, all working to reduce blood glucose concentrations. These effects include increasing glucose uptake into tissues, as well as increasing the production of storage molecules. As you can see, these two hormones have opposing effects and together produce blood glucose homeostasis. However, in diabetes, the insulin arm of this process is diminished. This can be caused by dysfunctional beta cells resulting in reduced insulin secretion or reduced insulin sensitivity in peripheral tissues, or even both. And now, the exocrine function of the pancreas. This function of the pancreas involves the secretion of pancreatic juices from the pancreatic duct into the duodenum. This includes the secretion of zymogens and trypsinogen. Enteropeptidase from the brush border converts trypsinogen into trypsin, which goes on to convert zymogens to activated enzymes. These enzymes include proteolytic enzymes, including chromatrypsin, lipolytic enzymes, including phospholipase A2, and enzymes that break down starch, including amylase. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so I'm able to continue creating this content. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.